Hello, I'm Melissa Milburn. I'm here at the Future in Review Conference 2013 with Heidi Lubin. Hi. She's the CEO of HEVT. Yes. And I believe you were the winners of the Clean Tech Open this past year. Yes, we won the National Grand Prize in the Clean Tech Open. Congratulations, and we're so pleased that you're able to join us as a fire starter this year here at Future in Review. Thank you for having so, us. Tell us a little bit about what HEVT is doing. Yeah, so. We're focused on energy efficient electric motor technologies. The value proposition is that we're up to 60% lower cost, up to three times more efficient than competitive technologies and free of rare earth metals. So one of the things that most people don't realize is that electric motor driven systems use about 46% of end use global electricity. So arguably more efficient electric motors are the best opportunity we have to create um, opportunity to, to take more people up the development scale by flattening demand and, and sort of spreading out the base load that we have capacity for right now across different uses, also carbon abatement. Mm -hmm. And you're using other materials, is that true? To a certain extent, actually what we're doing is we shift the burden from the active materials to the power electronics and software. I so see. our technology is really a hardware software play, not that different than, for example, Cisco is to, you know, network software, that right. industry. Right. Yeah. So what challenge then are you solving for? Basically the challenge is how do you induce an electromagnetic field, which in essence is what makes a motor spin. Mm -hmm. How do you induce an electromagnetic field without relying on more copper or, you know, magnets that typically use minerals called neodymium and dysprosium, which are rare earths. Rare earths are typically mined in bands of ore with thorium, which is radioactive. I so see. how do you essentially clean up the supply chain for motor technologies and shift some of that burden to software and power electronics, which enables all sorts of neat opportunities. So then in three to five years, I suspect that that will dramatically change the world when you're successful. Let's certainly hope so. So how do you see that happening? What do you think it's, it'll be like? I think it's a couple of different ways. Um, one of the things we're really interested in right now is as energy efficiency standards are passed, what's happened is historically what you've seen in the motor market is, I mean, motors are a subcomponent, right? Like nobody thinks about motors. There are probably a hundred motors in this room that we will never see or think about. So um, I think one of the things that's interesting is the other problem is the people or, I mean, yeah, ultimately the people and the institutions that spec motors for their products mm -hmm. uh, are not the same people who have to foot the bill for the efficiency. So what's going on right now is you see governments stepping in to improve energy efficiency standards as a response to, uh, frankly, the, the carbon increase that we've seen, you know, really bad news in, as of a week and a half ago that we hit 400 parts per million in, in Hawaii for the first time. Um, so I think there are two ways. I think one, we see this come out in new products, and I think SRM, the kind of technology that we use, is going to be of particular benefit because it's inherently variable speed, but it doesn't require rare earth minerals. So that will spark in and of itself another trend which we're already starting to see, which is manufacturing come back to all sorts of places, including Chicago where I grew up, that we haven't really seen manufacturing be cost effective in a long time. Uh, I think one of the other things we'll see is we'll see people either through the ESCOs, the energy service companies, start to figure out how to address the installed base of motors and technologies that are not particularly efficient using technology that will retrofit that and bring it up to uh, par for, for today's technology. Great. Well, Heidi, congratulations again, and thanks for joining us here at the FIRE Conference. Thank you. And we hope to see you back again.